Good evening and welcome to the workshop. In this video, we're going to be making a few small components which will contribute towards being able to get that rolling chassis going. They're all focused around the axle boxes and the various things that will fit and fix around them. We're going to be making some nuts for the spring pins. So this is a piece of 5 16 steel. We're going to face the end and then drill. We need about an inch worth of drilled hole. So we're gonna go in an inch and an eighth just to give us a bit of wiggle room and stop having to do this again if we have to set up again. tapping 3BA and I should have been tapping 3 sixteenths by 40. So uh, good job that uh, didn't go exactly as planned, otherwise I'd be feeling very silly. I'm just gonna chamfer the edge of the nut here. Now I'm going to part off, and so I'm using my parting tool and I'm squaring it up using a 1-2-3 block between the face of the chuck and the tool post to get it square. Um, I actually forgot my tool post has 90 degree ratchet stops anyway, so I didn't need to do this. Right, I'm using the hand wheel on the other side to move it across 80 thou for the thickness of the cutter and then 5.30 seconds for parting off the nut at the correct width. This little piece of brass is my nod towards trying to catch this nut before it goes flying into the pile of swarf. I've actually been so pleased with my parting off ability with this blade. I don't know what's going on because I've always had problems, but it seems to be going fairly well, as you can see. I'm parting off quite far away from the chuck at speed and it's going well, there's not even any chatter. There we go. One nut down and another eight to go. I've turned up a tiny little arbor here uh, and that's because I need to face off and chamfer the back end of these nuts. So the top end looks quite nice, the bottom end looks terrible. So this is just using the uh, the die in the die holder. So fritted that 3 16 by 40, the nut screws on, and then I should be able to use, hopefully, the various tools to tidy that up a bit. So this looks like it takes a while, but actually after about the third one I got into quite a rhythm, managed to knock out the rest of the nuts pretty quickly. You'll see as I change tools, I'm going back to using the ratchet on the tool post. There we have a nice nut, 3 16 by 40, with chamfers on both sides and uh, nicely turned faces. So I'm going to do the rest of those and come back to you. So this is just mild steel rather than silver steel and I am going to just cut this by hand because 
getting the hexa cut out to take a, a few cuts seems like a bit of a waste so i'll get doing that and then we're going to need to face the ends of both both ends down to one and five eighths of an inch and then thread the ends so let's get started I've marked all of these slightly over long because I'm going to mark the overall length on them and then I'm going to mark the uh, depth to which I need to thread them and do that in one setup. I realise in retrospect I could have threaded this end when I faced it. Uh, but didn't think about that, so that's my bad. Nevertheless, let's plough onward. We've got the spring pin in the collet now. So the first thing I'm going to do is plunge in with this parting off tool at the uh, end of this quarter inch threaded section uh, to create the gutter for the thread. Uh, and then we'll trim the end to size and we'll thread it. Since I don't have a handle for the spindle on the lathe, uh, actually threading using the collets is a gigantic pain because I have to put my fingers underneath the guard for the pulleys and push it round by hand. So I actually switched back to the three jaw chuck after this. There we go, there's one thread. So we need to repeat that and then we're going to attack this end. So once I've got them all done, I'll come back to you. Here is today's bounty. We have some spring pins and we have some nuts. So only when making this little bit here, I've realized I'm one spring pin short, so I'm gonna make another one. But in general, I'm really pleased with how this has come out. Uh, these are all to dimension. They've got a nice thread on each end. They've got a nice little gutter in there for the, the, the thread to bottom out on. The, the nuts are exactly what I was hoping. So in general, I'm really chuffed. A lot of labor to get here really, considering what you can see. Um, but I all think it went quite well and I'm really pleased. Well, thank you for joining me on this short adventure of spring pins and nuts. Um, certainly as I'm making these, even as I'm making the videos about making them, I'm, I'm learning shortcuts and areas I can improve on. Um, I Using different combinations of tools or the same tool. Uh, for this particular piece, this is the one that was missing, um, I had the whole bar chucked up uh, and I used two sets of Jenny calipers to get the, the various points, uh, the end, face the end, then cut, get the uh, measurement for the gully and plunge in there, then get the measurement for this gully and plunge in there, and then pull the piece out of the chuck a little way and get that overall measurement and then part it off, flip it and face it. So I actually only had two setups, you know, everything, uh, except for facing and threading, and then the facing and the threading. Uh, so I'm always learning on this one, I think. <laughs> I get the impression that that's just not going to stop. So I will be trying to do some slightly more grandiose things with the next video. I have the locomotive frames, and if you remember, they were slightly bowed, or one of them was slightly bowed, maybe a bit twisted. Um, geometrically, it seems okay. Um, but I'm really not too sure how to fix that properly. So if anyone's got any ideas on how to straighten out that frame, whether it's just by manual effort or, or something else, please let me know. Um, and as an addendum, uh, I would also like to know if you have any ideas on um, padding out one of the horns, because um, one of the horns has been machined uh, far too small in one axis at the, at the, the top of the horn. Uh, so I'll need to Put something up in there and i'm not not too sure the best way to handle that um 
let me let me get get it up on screen and you, you'll be able to see what i mean so that's the uh that's the horn and as you can see this is this is way too thin um, all the other horns are two inches from the bottom face to the top of the horn which is um, exactly what it should be but this one has been machined extremely uh, extremely flat and extremely narrow so i need to put a little pad in here and i'm not too sure how to do it so before i embark on it and make a gigantic mess of it if anyone's got any ideas please let me know